Hey guys, um, welcome all you new subscribers. I haven't made any videos in a while, but I normally try to make a video every Friday night. So make a note, and I really appreciate all the subscribers. Please pass around to anybody that you run into because I made this channel for those people who couldn't afford it, don't have time to research it. Um, most of you, you watch the last video I put on and really focus on the basics. All this other stuff is stuff as you progress and get better. And, and really start to blossom in your recording, mixing, and mastering that are really helpful things to really help you do a beautiful, wonderful, radio-ready production where you can go work at Sony Music if you want, and they'll just be like, you're like just badass, dude. You know, so that there's tons of videos on here. And in no specific order, just go through them all. So you got a really good understanding of most things happening when you're dealing with audio engineering as far as music production. Tonight, we're going to talk about impulse responses. You probably have never heard about this ever before, and you probably won't find it anywhere else on the internet trying to Google it or find any information about it, so you found it here. This We're going to talk about something that's really simple. These are impulse responses, and they're used for a convolution reverb. So if you've got a convolution reverb, you stick your impulse response into convolution reverb, and it's, some of them there's designer ones or cheap ones and all kinds of stuff, so that you can you know use... You know, you can mix those. They basically will convolve that impulse response into whatever sound you're working on. So the concept's really simple of what an impulse response is. If they go in there and you know, you know, you can Google what an impulse response is, or there's there's a, a video on this channel I do believe about impulse re frequency responses. So you probably want to watch that video. This is a different concept that's dealing with them. First of all, the concept that we're relating this to is this guides here, the C50 Clarity Guides, and you can Google that and research it a little bit. There's different ones for dialogue and for music, but I don't get them mixed up too much because the concept's really simple of trying to cut down the, freak, the impulse response so there's less detrimental reflections. That means that the actual impulse response is this long, but you're trying to cut all this other stuff out to reduce mud so that it doesn't start to get muddy. It's a really simple concept. So the concept of that is, is you know, you've got this direct sound, early reflections, and then all this stuff going on after it. So that's a really simple concept of these are all the reflections coming back, right? So you're trying to cut some of that out to 50 milliseconds. Okay, well, on this, what we're going to try to do, in impulse responses, you've got two different things. You've got frequency response and you've got impulse response. So I'm going to show you really quick that here we go. We're looking at this impulse, this large hall impulse response right there on the spectrometer. Now, if I put it on there and I play it, you can immediately see that is the frequency content coming through the convolution reverb that's mixed the frequency content coming through the convolution reverb that's mixed with this other sound that you're trying to use the impulse response on. So that can be a bad thing. So because you're adding all that frequency content to whatever sound you're trying to convolve an impulse response onto to make it sound like it's in some certain space, which can be good or bad depending on it, you know what the circumstances, the instrument, and things like that. So basically what I've done here is I've taken like, this is the large hall original right here. Let's say right here, right? This is the same one, but this one's got a flat frequency response on it because what I did is I put this one on here. And if you look at it, what I did is I took, well, let's deal with this one thing at a time. The first thing I did, like this is the original. So if I go over here, this is that large hall. By the way, I keep three people. I, I've got impulse responses coming out in my ears, but I use three normally. I've got a small hall, a medium hall, and a large hall. Really nice sounding ones. And I've got them at, that's the original large hall. I've cut it down to 50 milliseconds, down to 30, 40, down to 30, down to 20, and down to 10 milliseconds. I've cut them down and then what I did with all of them is I tapered them off and then I rendered those files and then I saved them. That way I've got this large hall original and I've got these cut down versions of them that really quick because you'd be surprised how much mud it can save in your mix and how well that this lush hall sounds great but it's just too much it's mudding it and the only thing you can do is turn down the reverb. 
Does that make sense? Or try to show earn it on a convolution when you're not really sure exactly if it's doing a real good job of that. And you know it is here because you go, no, that's too much. So I'm going to try a C20. It's cut down to 20 or 20 or 30 milliseconds. I'll throw that in a convolution reverb. And, oh, yeah, that sounds good. You know, that's not too much. And then you can turn up the amount of mix of the convolution reverb and it's adding that good lusciousness but it's cutting it off really quick that way it doesn't muddy the next word or the next note or the next chord or something like that so you understand that really simply cut those down and save those the original of those now also i've taken that whole large haul this one here and i'll show you this is that one normally like this if i put it on here and i go okay this is it normally you see the frequency response right now at, I took on this one if you look at this one it's flat does that make sense the frequency for response is basically flat across the spectrum it's the same concept as if you treat your room so that you have a flat frequency response in your room when you're listening and you're recording and mixing and mastering music the same concept that way you don't have interfering frequencies interfering with the sound that's going through the convolution reverb now the concept of this is what I did with this impulse response is all I did is I put an EQ on there at first. I EQ'd, the, I took the frequency response and then I EQ'd it, dropped down there, took some out there, took some out there until it looked flat on the spectrum after the EQ. And then after I had it flattened, I rendered the file. I just rendered the audio file on the track and then I saved it over to this folder that's flat. These ones are all flat see the flat original c50 c40 c30 c20 and c10 milliseconds because you can see from here up to 50 milliseconds right there does that make sense and you can see it doesn't quite go that far because when i when I, before i rendered it i tapered them off like that and then rendered the file that way if you look at this file this is the original you see how it goes and it tapers off that thing with these files didn't taper off that abruptly as they get smaller and smaller it's kind of hard to do that so they will taper off look like they're tapering off more abruptly as you make smaller and smaller versions of them but the cool concept of this is first of all is if you like the hall and the hall adds a really nice lushness to it and you don't want to cut out the frequency response because it's a good one i kept both of them does that make sense the ones that are not messed with with the frequency response and the ones that have a flat frequency response but shorter times that way that i can if it sounds good like that and i go it sounds good and or i go no i don't really like it like that it's adding some some spectral content to it that i want it to so i'll go grab one that's a flat frequency response that way if i'm like doing an oboe or something that as the oboe is going and i start adding a convolution reverb impulse response that has a flat frequency response and has been cut down that the first thing is it's got a shorter frequency response so you know it's l shorter in length so it doesn't muddy the mix but it has that good texture it's just cut off more abruptly and the second thing is that it cuts out all the frequency response so that impulse response only resonates the beautiful tones of that oboe it doesn't add all that other spectral content that i was showing you when i showed you this track here that it's going up like that all over the place that it's not adding that that spectral content on top of the oboe and changing the sound of the oboe that much because it just convolves it together does that make sense and this is a huge concept and i suggest you do that it's not that hard i decided i went through it and it was really bugging me and after i went through it for a while i finally decided i found the best large hall big nice hall and the best medium hall and the best small hall. and i decided to go with three the best ones that i had and then i did that with each one of them that there's normal there without cutting the frequency response but cut down in size and then here flat frequency response the original with flattened the frequency response to the eq and then rendered the file and saved those same cut down versions just like the original does that make sense i only kept three of them that way i can pull out a convolution reverb and i go well on this that might be really cool with a large hall but i know i don't want a big muddy sound if it's a solo instrument and it's getting a break somewhere and i just want to put it i know that it'll be okay and i want to pull that original hall out you know that big old original lush hall it'll be okay i'll turn it down a little bit and it'll be all right but if not i'll start looking for small smaller cut down versions of it and and you know work with it like that so that i cut out a lot of this stuff here these late reflections and the more of it you cut out 
The more of it you cut out, the shorter it's going to be so it doesn't muddy it. And it's the same concept so that you feel like I'm talking and it's like I'll say one word and then two words and then three words. And, you know, it doesn't, they don't start overlapping on each other, the reverberation and stuff like that and start causing a lot of mud. But it doesn't cut out all that nice lushness of the convolution reverb you're trying to put on it. It's just shorter. That way the next word or the next note or the next chord stays as clean as possible and as clear as possible. So it doesn't start causing a lot of mud in your mix. To where by the time you get done with your mix, you're like, you know, I, it just sounds like, you know, and it's like, why does my mix sound like crap, bro? You know, it's like, well, it's a muddy mix. You know, you got all that reverb on it all over the place, and it's like, well, all mixed together in a big old mess. You know, and it's like, <laughs> I keep turning shit up and down, but it sounds like a mess no matter what I do. And it could be your reverberation problem. So the biggest thing is just remember this is a cool concept to get in the habit of doing and I there's all kinds of different reverbs I got all kinds of different reverbs but I normally go to my convolution reverb and I use these because I if I want to add a certain texture or a certain sound I'll do it with EQ or saturation or noise files or you know distortion or something like that to add something to it you know I'm just trying to add some space I'm not worried about some designer reverberation plug-in you know for twelve hundred dollars that you know it's you know I had to sell my wife my three kids and there it is over there on the wall you know it's like because it really isn't doing that much that's that worth that much money when you can do this kind of thing and then add more you know you can you can uh sculpt the sound with saturations distortions you know noise files and equalization and things like that so anyway, I really hope you maybe watch this video again if you didn't really understand the concept. And ping me if you have any questions, but it's a huge concept to have in your tool belt to really help you clean up your mixes and be able to use your reverberation, which is one of the main meat and potato things that you're going to want to do when you're recording, mixing, mastering music to really do a good job of it. So peace out, love. Let me know if you have any questions. Enjoy the video, and I'll see you in next Friday night's video. Enjoy the channel.